The following is a presentation of the Four Center podcast feed. From the center of the galaxy, this is the Four Center podcast feed. I'm Ken Napsok. I'm Joseph Scrimshaw, and next up, you should hear, I'm Jennifer Landa, but Jennifer is still on a well-earned break. Jennifer will be back, we believe, next week. Don't hold us to that. The future is always in motion, but that is the plan right now to have Jennifer Landa back next week. Uh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, uh, I've seen the emails. It's happening. It's just a matter of when um, as she gets a wonderful deserved rest and recovery from life because we all need that from time to time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is, of course, our news show. Uh we call it the breaking news from a long time ago, but the breaking news can sometimes be from this morning when we are about ready to record. We're going to get into Ahsoka. The series is coming. August is on the way. Empire Magazine has started the drip. Capital T, capital D, the drip of uh, press, stills, <laughs> interviews, clips, blurbs. It's on the way. We have a couple we're going to talk about and one that popped up just this morning. Before we get all that today, we're going to remind you that today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash fourth center over 180,000 titles and climbing to choose from for your iphone android kindle or mp3 player a little bit later we have our fourth center recommends an audiobook we think you should try out on us uh, as always we do ask uh, have an ask we ask that you listen to our ask segment there you go <laughs> what's our Please. ask for today Please, can you listen? Please. Uh, no, we are continuing uh, to promote our Patreon. So many uh, people have joined us, uh, even more people uh, joined us uh, earlier this this month as we begin June. We're having so much fun doing Indiana Jones and the Perilous podcast. We have now had a deep dive discussion on the overall uh, saga of Indiana Jones and the first three films, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Temple of Doom, uh, Last Crusade, and in just a little while here, we're going to be talking about Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. We've been getting some great uh, uh, insights from listeners on Patreon about their journey with Indiana Jones, and we love that. So if you want to join us on the hype train that Indiana mm -hmm. Jones is clinging to the side of and fighting Nazis on mm -hmm. as we get to Dial of Destiny, Come join us on Patreon. Uh, as we've said, once Dial of Destiny is out, we will make these available uh, episodes available to the public. But for now, they're a Patreon adventure. If that interests you, we have a bunch of other stuff going on at Patreon, including a building to a new goal. So if you're interested, check out patreon.com slash force center. Check it out, my friends. Star Wars and Life Adventures is next for the two of us here uh, we both have great things going on, cool things on the horizon, and challenges in front of us, Joseph. And that's where <laughs> Star Wars can sometimes find you the most. Uh, how is uh, how's your journey going? It's going, it's going a lot. My journey is going a lot. Uh, it's one of those uh, weird times. I've got some, uh, as I've mentioned, I've got some some family stuff that that's difficult uh, going on, kind of stuff. It's it, it it's life, um, but it's it's got to be dealt with. Um, and that's heavy and Star Wars helps with that. And then I am working on this short film. Thank you to everyone who so kindly supported the uh, the Kickstarter. The Kickstarter was fully funded. We reached a couple of our stretch goals. So that's wonderful. And uh, as we're recording on a Monday, we are shooting this coming Saturday and Sunday. So I feel like I am 90 percent this film. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because it's just taken up uh, so much of my of my time in a wonderful way. I'm having so much fun, but it is also a uh, very, very all consuming. Mm -hmm. um, and it, the, to me, there's this fascinating thing, and I'm sure lots of listeners in, in various adventures in life have have experienced this where, you know, when you watch like a making of documentary about like, you know, say uh, Star Wars, the first one mm -hmm. turned out great. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. made a difference in people's lives uh and you kind of you hear the stories of the people who are working on it lucas himself thinking is this can this possibly come together is this all going to fall apart mm. and it's so easy to look at it from like the end result of like but it didn't <laughs> right. and uh this film that that i'm making is you know not the scale of star wars in any way, but it's an escalation for myself of the the amount of moving pieces and uh, mm -hmm. the budget and, and all of that. And it's kind of comforting to just think about, um, honestly, the parts of the making of stories of films like Star Wars that are 
<laughs> that are real tough. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I'm be like, oh man, I'm real stressed. I'm real tired. I'm worried about this. I'm trying to balance that. And then like, well, I didn't get uh, put in a hospital from stress and I don't mm-hmm. have, you know, uh, mm-hmm. British camera people fighting with me about my vision yet. <laughs> yeah. So I'm doing better than, than poor George did on the first mm-hmm. film. So Star yeah. Wars is finding me uh, uh, in that way. Um, then in the just kind of the fun way, uh, I've been doing you know a lot of shopping for uh, props and costumes and art supplies. And it's always fun to see Star Wars everywhere. So even while I'm, I'm not doing Star Wars things, my favorite Star Wars thing uh, I saw as I walked to this uh, costume and prop and theatrical store on Hollywood Boulevard that's been there since like 1950. And it's like, oh, it's a lot of monsters. And hey, you can be a mm-hmm. ninja or a fairy or <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. uh, whatever costumes. And then just peppered with the random Star Wars stuff, you know, a, a, a child Sith Lord costume. <laughs> uh, oh, wow. But my favorite thing I saw, which I, I had such strength to not purchase, was they had this kind of cheap plastic chalice, uh, but it was Darth Vader's head. Uh, and I always love drinking out of characters' heads. So yeah. if I need something else there, I might be picking up Darth Vader. Ah, uh, that'd be perfect for one of your uh, wonderful drink shots with the sun, <laughs> stars and the sun setting in the background. It'd be amazing. The head of Vader. Yeah, it, it almost looks like something that was like made, you know, uh, by the acolytes of Beyond or whatever to worship, mm. worship Vader. Yeah, let's drink out of his head. We worship him. Uh, yeah, so those are some of my life in Star Wars adventures. How about you? I love, I love, full indeed. We also we should thank before we get to my adventures. Uh, thank all the Force Center fans who have, and, and friends who have been so, uh, you know, forgiving that we've had uh, a little less content out these days. Mm-hmm. Since of that, and and I started a, a, a part time gig in the nerd space. Uh, some spend some energy doing that, which is, has been a lot of fun. So thank you all for allowing us uh, uh, that with your grace. We appreciate it. Uh, yes, for me, uh, you know, good and, good and bad perspective and, and all that uh, it matters. Um, the good is this. I have been uh, become obsessed with the adventures of young Indiana Jones. And you would yeah. prime me for this. You would prime me for this. You, you and Sarah were able to see some of the episodes last year, right, on Paramount Plus when it was there mm-hmm. for a short time. And I had not seen them, obviously, where the show, I used to watch the show back in 92 into 93. I don't remember watching the, the TV movies that came out later, but definitely the show. And I had, so I had vague memories of it. Liked it, but, I, you know, I don't know, kind of remember, I don't know, not as a lot of action and all the kind of stuff and young indie, blah, blah, blah. T, I, know, I know T. Lawrence shows up. All right, I get that. <laughs> um, but, you know, diving into the history of it, diving into ABC, not knowing what to do because great, a young indie adventure show. And George says, well, it's going to be educational. And, and George shows up with some just hard hitting themes and lessons and perspectives. And you would kind of prime me for that. Cause it's also fun names. So there's a long list of star Wars names in this series, mm-hmm. both from the past, Bruce Bow, William, uh, who can, um, in the future, what would become, uh, with the prequels there. And, and so I was primed for that, but I, I just been blown away. Been blown away by it. Um, everything that George gets to that this was on network television in the nineties, which was a different time. Uh, my other job, I, I mean, I can't shut up about it. My, my pal, some of you might know Matt Key from Marvel Movie News back in the day. He's kind of the guy who brought me into this gig, and I just like we I, we have a meeting at one thirty to pitch ideas with the whole staff. But I was like. Can I can I talk to you about young Indiana Jones? And I'm just like rambling over all this stuff. I can't contain my excitement. And and, and you and I will probably find a way to, to explore it here on the show. I don't know if we're gonna do all 22 mini movies that are now the show, mm-hmm. the Adventures of Young Indy. Uh, but we're gonna dive into it. But anyways, uh it's been fascinating. Fascinating to see George's state of mind, what he wanted to get across, what he decides to go do with the prequels, and how. This was the first example of uh, fan expectations and George's goals not lining up initially, right? But mm-hmm. but what remains is some really important things, and it, that's been fun just as a as a fan because you know you, you you and I and a lot of people listening, we've been around the block. Even if you Force Awakens was your first Star Wars, it's been a few years now, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> we've all been we so we. It's it, it, me as, as one of those Beatle fans who's I've heard everything and then get back comes out. And I'm like, oh, my God, that recontextualized something I grew up thinking. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, go back and visit George in the early 90s uh, where this was a blip, something I overlooked. Like, yeah, yeah, I know. Rick McCallum produced him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get I get it. I get it. I, <laughs> I, didn't, get it. I didn't get it. And it's been fun to explore that. So, yeah. I'm so glad they're on Disney Plus. Uh, yeah. 
one, because I'll have access to them, but I think a lot of people who have access to them in, you know, maybe people our age who, you know, had an awkward relationship with them or an up and down or mixed mm -hmm. relationship with them. Um, but yeah, so many Star Wars and Indiana Jones fans who they're absolutely brand new to. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it, yeah, it is just, it's, I love it for the Indiana Jones because it's mm -hmm. clearly something just lit up in Lucas with the story of Last Crusade of here's mm -hmm. this adventurer uh, that we really, you know, got excited about this adventure with the whip. And then it's kind of, it, it's kind of different that he's also a, you know, professor. We got the books and the swagger. Uh, but, but then in Last Crusade, we really learn like, Oh, th this is his father drilled the perspective of, of history and mm -hmm. knowing the world into him. And what is that like? How can I, I can explore those daddy issues <laughs> in, <laughs> in great depth. So it is absolutely, absolutely a, a mm -hmm. fascinating deepening of the Indiana Jones character in saga. But then at the same time, like you're saying, it's just, it, it, it is a, a making of prequel to the prequels from the actors to the production team to even in most excitingly to me the themes the ideas yes. so I, I just feel like even if people are like eh, i'm not really up for the indiana jones movies but i love the prequels mm. this is a fun thing to watch just from that perspective yeah to get crazy to think we won't go deep into a, th this won't be our breakdown adventures of <laughs> indiana jones episode here but I, I was watching the episode the last one i watched is the uh, perils of uh what's it called it's perils of, of cupid in love no perils of cupid and it goes into love and where nine-year-old Indy falls in love with Princess Sophie, the daughter of Franz Ferdinand. Now, it's just, you know, it's a history buff. This is just, as George is too, it's just fun to experience that. He's he's at that dinner table with Sigmund Freud, Carl Jung, and Alfred Adler having a conversation about love and philosophy. It's so deep. And by the way, Max von Sydow is Sigmund Freud, like just mm -hmm. fun guest star stuff. Um, and I, I just was laughing while I'm watching this. I'm like, and this was like, Thursday night primetime ABC programming and no wonder and and executives no wonder they didn't know what to do uh, here now I'm watching wiki there you go we'll get that out um <laughs> I love having all the sound dump into one thing and I love ads on websites um but uh yeah it's just been it's I, I was just laughing that imagine you're ch chopping a cigar in, in ABC studios going we got George Lucas here what the hell? He's got Sigmund Freud debating love <laughs> with the young Indian. What are we doing? Here? Uh, it's just massively fun. So, anyways. yeah, yeah, anyways, I, yeah. I, the final thing I'll say about it for now too is like I think it is fascinating from that perspective too of uh, you know Lucas the uh, the rebel in flannel um, mm. who, who really did carve out his own path, and I think because he paid so much for things, was able to do things like yeah, people wouldn't do. I mean, this is mm -hmm. shot all over the world and it, it is this just this fascinating lucas tension maybe it works for you maybe it doesn't but like i want it to be silly i want it to be fun and, and full of life and i want it to be over the top that everywhere indiana jones goes he meets the most famous person right. <laughs> in, yeah. in in history it's it's bonkers it's absurd it's not realistic but then yeah. within that like i mean i want to get into the deepest heart mm. of what is what is the history of philosophy what makes us uh who we are you know what choices should we actively make as a society to be the best to yeah. everybody you know and they don't always you know if if a network uh cigar chomping network executive had access to them the clone wars wouldn't have happened this yeah. wouldn't have happened and that's part of what makes them beautiful and special and weird it is it is and fun. yeah shooting all over the world you got i got for the tangier episode uh you got to see one of the uh, cities that daenerys targaryen t takes over but in 1992 uh, <laughs> so fascinating stuff fascinating there so there's that that's the positives on the other side i got a car accident yesterday i'm mm. okay 2002 four mustangs hanging in there we're okay and I, I let anger take over me what was not uh my fault uh car turned into me but uh you know you try to fight you try not to give in the dark side but i gave in the dark side and i felt bad for it but then calmed down and then uh was taking pictures of the scene of the accident for myself for my insurance and a major accident happened in front of me again <laughs> like like mm. real bad real bad uh everyone was able i i, I think okay but i think it was going to be some injuries and uh that's one of those like okay <laughs> okay <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, we're all staring out of the twin suns waiting for our, our, our dreams to come true. And it doesn't always work that way. And sometimes you just got to uh, go where the, the journey takes you. I'm okay. My car's okay. So Star Wars, uh, hopefully finding me at my uh, most angry because I was angry. I just was going to get some vegan hamburgers, Joseph. That's all I was doing. <laughs> And a car just I, came to me. <laughs> I understand. Uh, you, we were talking off air, and I think you know there there are those things in life that like it is upsetting all by itself. But then when it feels like a metaphor for life, it that mm. that makes me even more angry. Of like, yeah, it, I would be furious if I were in your position. Of like, I'm just literally staying in my lane, doing my thing, and <laughs> the world yeah. whacks into me. Yeah, I felt like I was traveling in a hyperspace space lane during the high republic era when the uh, incidents start happen <laughs> happening and the nile messed things up so that's marky and row marchy and row whatever your damn name is how dare you turn your car how dare you so there you go that's our life adventure sorry for the mini indiana jones breakdown i just i'm just in love with this series and i want you all to be in love with it too so uh, let's, uh, from that, go to a, a news story, a series of news stories about a series I hope we all love, too, because we always are excited for new Star Wars. And as of right now, August is the month for the release of the Ahsoka series. Um, we should point out, we're going to get to some of the business here, but, you know, WGA strike's still going on. Uh, SAG could be next. WGA is like, we're fine, we're good. We've got our contract signed up. Oh, the town is a flutter. <laughs> with yeah, DG, the, the, the director's union, yeah. Yeah, DGA is, uh, yeah. Uh, but anyways, all that, uh, we'll see if it delays anything. I don't think it will in terms of release. Uh, we should be good. But it is time, my friends, Empire Magazine interviews, stills, blurbs. They are dripping out and beginning to give us a picture of the Ahsoka series. Um, what the Vanity Fair cover articles were for the prequels, the slow drip of Empire Magazine uh, and stills are for <laughs> modern Star Wars shows to me. I don't know if that uh, that's off base, but that's what it kind of feels like to me, you know? No, I think so. I think it is the moment that it gets splashed everywhere in like, this is like, okay, it's time for uh, the the diehard fans to get hyped and it's time for the people who haven't really known this thing is happening to start mm -hmm. passing it in the in the grocery store. Ah, that's a key thing you just said there. I love Yeah, you yeah, highlighted that here. So it's Ahsoka's turn and two covers were revealed this week for their upcoming July issue, which I think might drop as soon as Thursday this week. I thought I read one public cover with Ahsoka in action on that pillar heavy location in the show's trailer and a special cover, kind of a black and white image of Ahsoka and the shadow and shape of Thrawn. Uh, behind her, it's for the subscribers. If there's still subscribers of magazines out there, I used to have like 15 back in the day. Uh, and this uh, to me looks like an album cover in 1997. Really good. Like the, the Verve just released something or maybe uh, <laughs> Collective Soul. I don't know. So I want to start with the covers. Joseph, thoughts on the covers? Are we ready for the press bliss uh, where we are with that? And a little bit of the business. Uh, does the business of Disney, the union strife, uh, what's going on with Disney Plus, the shows being pulled and, and, and tax breaks, all those things we're reading, does it affect any excitement for you is all at all. I want to be honest about that. So I'll start with you on the covers. Yeah. I mean, the, the covers are fascinating, particularly since uh, looking at them on the internet, they cannot stop with the ads. <laughs> so yes, right now, the first one for me is Ahsoka uh, teamed up with a cat and a dog advertising top deals of the month at Petco. So <laughs> <laughs> don't think that was intended. So I'm going to uh, try to close the ad so I can see the mm -hmm. rest of it. Yeah, the, the the main one is really really great. It, it it is it isn't anything that we haven't seen before with the uh, right, the right. temple location, but I really was affected by just the huge image of Ahsoka. Mm -hmm. Nothing else, no Din, no Obi Wan, not even any of the other characters from this show. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, this phrase that it says on the cover: "Sabers up." as the iconic warrior finally takes center stage. Mm -hmm. uh, that just got me, it, there's a lot that just got me really, uh, I've been excited for Ahsoka, but I think I've just been patient for, mm -hmm. yep, that thing's coming. Um, I loved all of the Star Wars storytelling that we got in the last few months, but between um, Mandalorian, Bad Batch, Visions, London, uh, you know, being there for Star Wars Celebration, then all the May the 4th celebrations. It was just kind of a, a lot all, all at once. And now there's just been a little bit of, for me, like a deep breath. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten so excited for Ahsoka. And, and this is where part of the cover comes in, is the idea that this is um, 
classic, classic Star Wars stuff is lightsabers and old temples and a, and a Jedi finding a new path. Uh, so all this stuff that I absolutely love about Star Wars, I'll, I'll take Jedi stuff as, as my main dish, um, but it's Ahsoka. Mm-hmm. And this idea of her sort of like, the, the world will know Ahsoka now is really, really exciting. And now we're going to talk about that uh, more with some of Floney's quotes, but that's mm-hmm. the way this, this cover hit me of this, this feeling of like, wow. <laughs> it's like yeah. when you, when you see one of your, uh, one of your old friends, you know, uh, have a big career success and like, Oh, people are, their name's <laughs> going to be ringing out. Like uh, people are going to know our old buddy Ahsoka now, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, am- it's an amazing way to look at it. Uh, um, Love that. Yeah. love that feeling. Uh, when you get to watch that in someone else's life, it's, it's fun. Um, well, well, I really like what you said there. This is a great way to start it about what this means and what this represents. Uh, I, I too feel as though just uh, unintentionally they've been taking a little bit of a break from Star Wars in terms of excitement. Like it's still part of what we are doing here every, every week, but even as we've said up top, we're doing a little bit less episodes to get some stuff going in and kind of take a deep breath that we haven't, I'll be honest, we really haven't done for eight years. <laughs> no, I, 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 there's, there's like, there was guilt of like, are, are yeah. we allowed to do two episodes a week for just a short time? Like, yeah. And again, that's why we're so thankful for all you four center friends who listened support of the years to, to realize like we have some re- like I, I, I want to send out handwritten letters to y'all. I po- apologize <laughs> for not working as hard as we have. But I'm excited. That this show is the one that's going to be like kind of the Eric. Right, let's gear up again. Um, th- because a lot of what you're saying, this is this is a a band you love just released a big single. Right. This is uh uh, try, I, I was a fan of Semisonic, but now you all hear closing time. Get welcome aboard. Like you know, this was, this was me in '99. Um, and, and there's a lot to that, and a lot to you know. I, I, I it's prime for success, but I, I do want to discuss some of the history of that. Of of this is, I think, the right time for Ahsoka versus a few years ago and everything like that. And I'm and, and I love the photo, and I love Sabers Up. Is a <laughs> love it. It's 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 the full blitz, and and I'm excited for it i will say and i perhaps this was well i wanted to put the question in there i do have a little bit uh just we're we're living in 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 a city that's directly affected by a lot of the the labor strife going on the union strife and, and the strike and and all the stuff going on it, it, it it's it's not taking away my excitement for the show i feel i can still talk about this still do a podcast about this stuff we're not just here to focus on the news we're here to focus on what it means to all of us so um, I still feel it's important to talk about it, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a weird time, especially, you know, Disney plus being the latest, uh, location where shows are being pulled for $1.5 billion tax write off. Like, yeah, it, 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 it burns me a little bit. I don't think anything in star Wars will come off yet, unless maybe some of the smaller things that are on there, the Lego stuff or something. We'll see. I hope not. Uh, I am for one upset about the Willow thing being pulled and we'll see what happens in the future of course but yeah i, I was gonna so i was gonna pitch it to you joseph like mm-hmm. where are you it's a temperature check of like there's some reality <laughs> but also you and i are of the mind of like no let's let's get it all working right so we all all can hopefully uh share art to make money and have livings and not scrounge and and it's the realities but um it's a weird spot i think at least for me yeah no i i i really uh agree with all of that um i i think for me, uh, there is always, and we talk about a lot on the podcast, an awareness that this giant corporation uh, of Disney that is designed to make money uh, is a giant corporation. Uh, I think it, when everything is working, the people involved in making money for the, this giant corporation are aware that at the end of the day, what they sell is magic. That's what yeah. the Disney name and hopefully the the Lucasfilm name mm-hmm. means is taking people to wonderful, exciting places and enriching their lives. And mm-hmm. as a corporation, um, uh, it, it to me it's it's important that they uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, are not destructive. And and I think all of these wage battles are destructive. You, you, it, it this is going on. It, mm-hmm. It's a it's affecting this industry very directly right now. But I think the reason that polls are coming out with uh, people in support of writers is because the communication has been made. Um, mm-hmm. The the image that sometimes people have of you write on one television show and you got a mansion in the hills, right, is mm-hmm. <laughs> so far from reality. And the fight that is happening is the the fight that is happening everywhere where 
too much money is flowing up to the top in unprecedented uh, level and mm -hmm. it is grinding everybody down and that's not sustainable, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's not just that, oh, that's a bummer. <laughs> uh, yeah. it's, it's that it isn't sustainable. And, and I think this battle is, is really, really important for that. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm always really aware of, of all of those things, the, the ups and downs of it. Um, but I think on the other side of it for me, I'm like with Ahsoka in, in particular, a great question of, is, is this going to stop me from enjoying it? The WGA mm -hmm. is not officially asking people to not watch things. And like, there've yeah. been some, you know, some tweets and hashtags going around of cancel your Netflix. And if somebody chooses to do that is, is their own way of making a statement. Great. Um, but the WGA is not asking that. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think the, to me, the notion is we want to celebrate the work. We want you to enjoy the things that we have worked so hard to create. And we want to get back to creating them while being paid a fair wage. Mm -hmm. So, from that perspective, I feel like I want to celebrate the art uh, and I want to celebrate the way it brings us together and helps us through life. And uh, and I think it, it's good. I'm excited to celebrate those things about Ahsoka. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Sorry. I was just listening to you taking it all in. Hand, <laughs> chin on my hands. Eyes wet. Uh, <laughs> love it. No, I, I yeah, I, I, I think more than anything, I, I just I, I, I I'm OK with the realities of. Someone years ago, someone got mad at me um, from a trivia league I used to compete in. Um, who they tweeted me like, "Why are you helping Disney promote this stuff?" And I was like, "I'm not helping them. I, I have a podcast diving into it. That's how I make my money. So they make theirs. That's how I make it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like what do you like? What do you think we're all doing around here? So I have a pretty realistic view of 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 it. I, I wish we all were one independent artists that could get our art out there. And even that's kind of a lie because you could do that. You could be an independent artist who gets your music, your comedy and your videos out there. But the uh, algorithm bosses are there to make that a little bit of a harder reality too. Like it, it's a struggle no matter which way you look at it and you try to break yeah. through and everyone. And, and this is how you break through the system of these, you know, big studios, it's always going to be there. So anyways, um, all I had to say before we wander too far into, into the, the woods of this conversation of, you know, it, it is, uh, I don't, I don't have any realistic uh, fear that uh, Ahsoka will come drop and then be pulled from the network. But I also <laughs> wouldn't have thought that about Willow, right? Like it's Willow. It's, it's, it's a big brand for them. And, and, and I am a big fan of the show and I know not everyone was totally get it, but that should not, be, I mean, this that that show affected people's lives. It was some yeah. of the best representation on Lucasfilm to date, and it meant something for people. And here we are in Pride Month, and that is, uh, I think, a wonderful thing. And it also, too, uh, you know, a, a complicated thing at times with brands just jumping on the the sales, but also it's a weird time as those brands are then attacked and and, and um, almost uh, burned to the ground by those who would stand before uh, p progress and change. And, and so it's, 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 it's put me in a weird frame of mind, but I, I'm excited to mm. just kind of, as they say, get on the field and play the game when Ahsoka drops. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand. And I didn't get a chance to watch Willow and I'm really bummed that I just can't right now. Um, mm. And I think, I agree with you. I think for the Star Wars of it, yeah, yeah, maybe there's, you know, maybe some of the Lego shows or something with a little smaller profile they might try to get away mm -hmm. with. But honestly, I think that uh, there's got to be an awareness of um, that would be a big poking the bear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, if Star Wars stuff started to flit in and mm -hmm. out, uh, particularly uh, the stuff that's only available on Disney Plus. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, there you go. Thanks for letting me uh, just work through that. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I think it's I think it's important too because I think we always have to be th there there's no point in ignoring it's a it's a corporation. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. And and there's also at the same time no point in ignoring uh the power of this storytelling that brings people together and helps their lives and entertains mm -hmm. them. It both exist and you got to reckon with both. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm someone who's still at the end of the day I think I like Bob Iger, but he's also, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a complicated world. Um, mm -hmm. Let's get back to the art here. A quick blip of an interview with Dave Filoni was revealed with some big quotes. 
First, Dave talked who Ahsoka is at the start of this series, saying she's a wanderer at this point and is in a lot of ways wary of any organization as such because of the power that comes with it as a group. Huh. Um, she walks a path that basically died out a long time ago, and there aren't many like her left, if any. So that's a lonely thing. What is that, that life like? If you're a loner, you have a very small circle of friends. What is it like then when you try to open back up i you know i love that quote and i want to get from you what you take from this quote about i'm just going to remix something maybe i think you and i have touched upon before here but i just i'm feeling maybe energetic because i survived this car crash and i'm living again <laughs> i don't know that was it it was real easy but I, I, throughout the history of force center there's been a lot of times where i think i even personally even more than you will make a little bit of a snarky comment about dave filoni a little the man in the cowboy hat or oh he did it all and da, da, da. And that, that's a reaction, I, I will admit, to not him, to a lot of the people who would use him or his thoughts or his successes against some of the other properties in Star Wars that I love that, that didn't mm-hmm. try to involve Dave. And I, I have to own that. I, um, and, and I don't think he's perfect. And I don't think everything he's put out there is A+. plus. Uh, but it's A. <laughs> you know, like it's, it's an A. It's an A grade. And I, and I think reading some of his interviews, um, it reminds me of um, – you know, uh, what he has brought, what he has learned, what he is, you know, and again, Henry Gilroy, Carrie Beck, uh, Jennifer Corbett. There's been a lot of people around him and there will always be. And by the way, I think he's the, he'll be the first to, to tell you that, right? He hasn't, mm-hmm. he hasn't erased these names. I think the fandom has not. And, and that's a general sweep at, at a certain um, discussion group. But um, here, this is what I love. It just, this quote of who she is, where she is, and also what is it like then? He, he asks those those why questions that we love so much here. And to finally have him once again, because Rebels was was an example of it, and obviously with Mando, but have him kind of be like, all right, this is my moment, right? He makes this <laughs> article, has a little bit of like, I got to show George, it's like turning a school paper. I really think he is there for this moment. And I think, you know, watch him cry at Star Wars Celebration because of what it all means to him. That means something to me as a fan. So, uh, I'm always going to maybe joke a little bit, um, you know, but I, uh, I'm really, this quote reminded me of like, oh yeah, along with that Duel of Fates Phantom Menace monologue that was in the Disney <laughs> gallery. The guy speaks a language of Star Wars I love to listen to. So that's a start. That's my starting point, but tip it to you about the, the quote here. Yeah, no, I, I really agree with you. I think, um, I, I think that you, you can poke fun at creators, but I have no no huge criticism of Dave Filoni. I think the only thing that I ever have is I'm very uh, uh, leery of any sort of deification of creators. You know, mm-hmm. I have creators I absolutely love. Obviously, George Lucas, David Lynch, you know, Endless, uh, Frank Sinatra, uh, and... and but I always want to treat those people as people with uh, flaws and ups and downs. And I, and I know sometimes people just mean them as memes, but you know, when Mando season one was happening and when clone, the last season of clone wars was happening and everybody was into them and, and you know, there, there'd be like <laughs> the memes where Dave Filoni is, is the son. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's not about Filoni. That is about for me, my relationship with, um, uh, the highest compliment you can you can pay a creator to me is like you're a human who you know mm-hmm. <laughs> has to drink water or they'll die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> with uh, with flaws and challenges and and it's it's your strengths and your weaknesses that that find your way into the art and that's what makes them wonderful and beautiful and we just we just don't do ourselves any favors I think by by treating yeah uh, r- loving the work lo- loving the person great but that sort of that deification you know yeah. um yeah. I, I i'm not here for uh and i think it is what what causes legitimate confusion like i've, I've seen people that i think um uh mean no disrespect to anybody continuing to credit dave filoni for the bad batch it, mm-hmm. when it's been crystal clear like he's not actively working on that that all that credit get goes to jennifer corbett um mm-hmm. not not son meme dave filoni yeah uh but uh, real human creator, student of uh, of Lucas, evolving, growing, coming into his own. Uh, I I love uh, Filoni as a creator, and I and I love this uh, quote. Uh, so to get into the actual quote itself, I think what I like about it is there is this sense uh, that Filoni often talks about of being aware of the old and the new. 
of mm-hmm. what are what are these foundational underpinnings of Star Wars and how can we respect them while we must absolutely move forward and try other things? Mm-hmm. Um, I think what really excited me is just right away of that. She's a wanderer. Mm-hmm. Um, the I think a lot of us who grew up with the original trilogy, one of the bumps we had with the prequels was the the big organization of the Jedi, because mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, certainly people I talked to on the playground in the bars, as we always say, um, there was just something about the way Obi-Wan was like, yeah, I was wandering around and I bumped into this Anakin kid and mm-hmm. I decided to teach him the way yeah, I was, I was wandering around and bumped into Yoda and he taught me and like, it felt more nomadic. Yeah. And yeah. there was a long time where people kind of just thought that was the sort of the way of the Jedi is mm-hmm. you're just, you just kind of wander from town to town. And if you find a problem, you deal with it. Um, so I love that there's this sort of older idea of what the Jedi could have been that maybe Ahsoka is right now. Mm. And that's such mm. a fascinating era in being a Jedi of not hunted. We now have that story a lot where people are trying to be the Jedi, but they're not hunted. And if anybody sees their lightsaber, that's going to bring the Inquisitors down on them and everyone they love. But this idea of like, well, nobody's going to necessarily come for me. Mm. So I can just wander from place to place helping when I see a problem is a fascinating place to have uh, Ahsoka start in, and it sort of ties t- to me these older ideas of what the Jedi might have been like. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I didn't really thought of that angle there. It's funny because this is also a week where, um, once again, good old Pablo Hidalgo got him in, himself into some uh, Twitter uh, main stories with his talk of uh, responding to some tweets out there about sur- the amount of surviving Jedis, right, and how that was even he admitted in a tweet, like, yeah, as an OT kid, that it wasn't necessarily something I thought was the case, right? And so it took mm-hmm. an adjustment, uh, even in the development of Rebels. We got to remove Kanan and Ezra from the board, right? And now here we are at this side of it here. And uh, I love what you're saying about it connecting to like an older, uh, older, older, older version of the Jedi Order. And definitely works for her with where we left her in the Clone Wars, where we pick, pick up again in uh, Rebels, but even more recently with Mando and, and Boba Fett, I, I think it really tracks. And I'm, I'm really drawn to, it's a lonely thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what is that life really like? And this idea of, you know, opening up post uh, a traumatic experience, which she's had a few, you and I have talked often about the sadness and maybe simmering, I don't know, anger, resentment, uh, <laughs> uh, complications in her soul uh, where, where we meet her in Mando um, mm-hmm. versus a little bit more peaceful and serene in Book of Boba Fett. And where, what is that, how does that factor into the show? Uh, the exact timeline, you know, I think there's going to be some timelines in either direction in this show. We'll see. But um, I just like, that's a great theme of just all of us, especially you know, dealing, and I, I'm, again, this is one of the things like, I, I don't necessarily know if Dave was like, you know, I'm going to write about my experiences in the lockdown and pandemic, but <laughs> I feel as though we all kind of disconnected from a lot of things mm. and I've had great times. I've, I've really spent a lot of time with myself and, and my fiance, my dogs over the last couple of years, but I, I find myself like, like even tonight I have to go to a party and I have to see some friends I haven't seen in three, four years. I'm excited, but I'm also like, or I could not go and just, I guess keep doing what I've been doing and, and, but I'm you know, kind of disconnected from these people. And, and how do you, how do you do that? What is it like when you try to reconnect? I think a lot of us might've gone through that. And so again, I don't think Dave was like, cool, finally, I'm going to write about my lockdown experiences. No, he's had this story of the sucker for a while. It ties into big themes, but I think this is where Star Wars will find you in, in its real life. And it's something I think we've all gone through in the last couple of years. No, I, I agree with that. And I think that Ahsoka is in a place of trauma um, she lost her rebels family. She mm-hmm. lost, uh, she, you know, w- had to be confronted with the reality of what happened to Anakin. I think we can get some clarity. I think, you know, it's a possibility that she was just marooned for a long time as the galaxy spun by, mm-hmm. uh, without her able to help or make a difference. Um, and now she's out here in, a sort of broken but so, sort of healing world and mm. i think it really uh it's a it, it's really era building uh, mm. of what's going on in this in this new republic era i love that he acknowledges you know the cautionary tale of the prequel era 
that mm-hmm. it, in, individuals with good intentions in organizations with good intentions, that organizational structure can, can make them rot. I, I am still uh, of, of the idea that it isn't that Ahsoka is like, I've looked at all your Jedi rules and they're dumb. It's that mm-hmm. the Jedi rules are great. The spirit of them are great. And you are gravitating away from them. You are not supposed to be in lockstep with an authoritarian government. You are supposed to be listening to your instincts. And if you listen to your instincts, you would have known I was innocent. And in, instead, you were too caught up in government. And you put me on trial. That's not what you taught me. That's not how you taught me to be. That's mm. not who we should be. So I'm walking away from that. So we, we've we got this mm. cautionary tale of these are the dangers when when, yeah. you know, interactions between people go from a small group to this grand scale that that can mm-hmm. rot. But then on the other hand, side of that, you have exactly what you're talking about. Like, but mm-hmm. people need one another. And Ahsoka in particular, a character who just has such mm-hmm. compassion and, and joy from other people on the other side mm-hmm. of that, needing to get back together with people and feel that idea of compassion and the great Star Wars theme of stronger together. Mm. I love that. That's the tension uh, of mm. that. We're going to meet her in. Yeah. It's, it's a great emotional starting point for me. And and we haven't even got to the space whales yet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Where it is. Where it is. Well, much more to talk uh, in, in terms of themes and, and um, the emotions of it all. I'm sure as this, as the show, um, uh, gets closer and closer to coming, but the show uh, will be heavily tied and built on Rebels. That's not a surprise. Uh, Rebels 2.0, right? We've been discussing that. And uh, Dave addressed the question of what about the people that aren't familiar with Ahsoka from the Clone Wars and Rebels by saying the biggest challenge was there's a whole bunch of audience that know her and a whole bunch bunch that don't. She has one foot in the star in the Star Wars that a lot of people know because of her connection to Anakin, and yet. She's all new and can go in in her own direction, in her own way. I think that makes her an interesting bridge between what came before and what's really possible. I want to get your thoughts on this. Uh, I, I really, um, I want to I'll start here, Joseph, looking back to things I think I've even said here, but I definitely, this is stuff I'd said over the the old job there at Collider, where in 2015, 2016, I felt there was an immediate kind of call from, from a lot of uh, fans of a Ahsoka movie, right? Oh, we're doing Star Wars stories? Ahsoka, Ahsoka, Ahsoka. That came up a lot. And I remember saying on the show, like, agreed, she's become one of my favorite characters. I was one of the ones who in 2008, eight nine were like, I don't know, she seems pretty snippy. Um, <laughs> grew into what I, I felt was really one of my favorite characters. And, and I still would, would call her that, even though so many other wonderful characters have emerged and, and I was I, I fall in love with them too. Uh, but I just didn't feel it made sense at the time where I think the, the harsh reality was dead. Not a lot of people watched Clone Wars, not as many as you thought, even though there's, I think, an entire Clone Wars generation of fans and definitely was a popular show. In 2015, 2016, there was a lot more Ahsoka question marks. What do you, What is that character name? Uh, what is that? Uh, then there was, uh, you know, um, yes, I know who that character is and I want more of her. But I think over time, as the Clone Wars generation um, emerges as Rebels shows up and Ahsoka becomes a key part of that. This just all makes more sense and I'm more excited for it. Like, I, I think talking about journeys and staring into the twin suns and asking for something and not getting it quite yet uh, <laughs> it's a great purpose. I think I think it just it just was not right back then and it is now and that I think Dave's right that this is a interesting character that's in the middle of a lot of things and a lot of ideas and I, I personally know people who still kind of refer to her as this is the character that the, the those sweaters are of, right? <laughs> like mm-hmm. to her universe. <laughs> Even my own fiance, big Star Wars fan, loves Rosario Dawson. It's like, I, who is, is this the one? Like our friend Wendy Lee really loves the sucker. I was like, is this, is this like Wendy's favorite character? Which one is this? And, <laughs> and, and like, that's, that's going to be, that's still the norm, I think, for the large audience, which is why going back to the original point, now she's in line at grocery stores on Empire Magazine. <laughs> And that's exciting. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there are people who are Star Wars fans. They just watch the movies. They're aware of the the cartoons, the mm-hmm. animated series. Maybe they gave, you know, a couple episodes of Clone Wars a try and it, it wasn't for them. But but they'll have heard of Ahsoka, right? And like, you know, it'll be, a, did, 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 hey, did you, I, I think I remember like they gave Anakin a Padawan. <laughs> right, right. In that cartoon and, and he's grown up and it's like, in some ways it's, it's exciting to think about, and I think that's why that cover hit me of if you're 
if you're a fan and you're vaguely aware uh, of Ahsoka, that image is striking of yeah, what, yeah. who's this alien woman with two blazing white lightsabers. Like we see that and we're like, ah, oh, yes. Uh, and she bled them in this novel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, But you, if you're a little out of touch with that side of Star Wars and you just see that, like if I hadn't, if I'd never met Ahsoka, if I'd never watched Clone Wars or Rebels, um, and, and wasn't doing this podcast and was a, like a very casual Star Wars fan, that would just be an image that I dreamed of seeing for years of just, mm -hmm. who's this Jedi? In what era? Why are those lightsabers white? So mm -hmm. uh, I am really excited for people who are are getting to fully meet her for the first time mm -hmm. and right. getting just drawn in by the wonderful Star Warsness of it. Um I also just think uh, your point of the, the the stars are aligned and the time is right is uh, I think for general audiences who are like uh, I'm kind of casual on Star Wars, but everybody's talking about the Baby Yoda show, mm -hmm, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. and they watched uh, the Mandalorian. And the Mandalorian, I think, really it not only introduced Ahsoka, but it really primed people for a lot of these ideas, a lot of these characters, a lot of these moments are from uh, these animated series, and you can go check them out if you want to. Mm. Um, so I think that people are aware of what they're getting into for the most part. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I personally think that, that Floney and Favreau uh, did a good job throughout Mandalorian with things like the dark saber, you know? Yeah. Uh, if you know it, great. It's, 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 oh, OMG, Moff Gideon has the dark saber. Um, if, if you see it and you go, yeah, I bet that's a thing. You can read a thousand articles and explainer videos. Uh, yeah. But getting going back to the like, well, what if you just don't? What if you what mm. if you don't know what that is? And what if you don't want to look it up? <laughs> what if you don't <laughs> want it to become, as some people feel, homework? Yeah. Think, uh, to me, thinking about it from that perspective of you, you've watched the first season of Mandalorian, you've enjoyed the first season of Mandalorian, you felt like you didn't need to know too much. And then that Gideon guy's alive and he's got some crazy bleeping <laughs> yeah. glowing black lightsaber. Yeah. That's fun too. You you don't need to know. Yeah, I think sometimes our desire to feel like which episodes do I want to watch is is wanting to not feel like you're left out. Mm. Mm. But I think from the perspective of the show, the live action Mando Book of Boba Fett told you everything you ever needed to know about that lightsaber and what it means to the characters you're watching now. You don't have to watch a single episode. Mm hmm. No. And I'm really fascinated with Filoni being very invested in that balance of mm -hmm. I am going to lose my mind when uh, Professor Hiang, uh, yeah. played by the 10th and 14th Doctor, David Tennant, hits the screen. But I guarantee you there's not going to be any need to watch those episodes. And it can just be like, cool. I didn't, I didn't know a robot used to help Jedi build lightsabers. Awesome. So funny. This this. This is maybe a little off to the side of this, but I was in the, the this other job I have, and I was in this pitch meeting, and I was talking about oh, we need to probably do some Ahsoka prep content. You know, I mentioned P Professor Huang. I said, "Is this droid?" And da da da. And one of the other writers in the room was like, "What? Wait, that? Wait, 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 wait. That's the droid's name?" And and started kind of going in on me. And then I was like, and I I, I knew this writer was a big Doctor Who fan. I said, "Well, let me stop you there. D David Tennant is 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 the and and they went, I'm in." I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. So that's fun to me that that that, that kind of thing is uh, this pop culture world. Is, someone's going to have a the first time with Pro Professor Huang. That's amazing to me. Part of yeah. the fun. And Dave's aware of that. You know, he's not just going to be like, boom, here. Unless you do a Jesse Eisenberg horror movie, like, boom, line, squiggly line. This is Professor Huang. Rule number 37. <laughs> yeah. And, mm. and I think it, no matter what the the show is going to get, criticized maybe sincerely maybe with you know a lot of uh thought and it's gonna get just dunked on in, in casual social media posts yeah. it, it's gonna get dunked on for being you know it's just a commercial for the animated series uh, everything's too complex it's just all homework now those criticisms will come um yeah. but for me I, I want to go into this with like if the, if if that's what you feel and that's not for you hey uh walk a different path <laughs> I can I can recommend Remington Steel. I'm enjoying rewatching old episodes of that. There's there's go go crazy with Columbo and don't worry about continuity. There's a million yeah. things for you if you don't want to worry about continuity. 
But that's what <laughs> Star Wars is. That's who these characters are. That's the world yeah. that Filoni himself celebrates every time you put a mic in front of him. He's like, I love that it's an interconnected world and mm -hmm. that they're building everything. So if it's not for you, totally understood. But to me, this is like criticizing a pizza for having tomato sauce. It's what it is. <laughs> it's that that it's the essence of it is that this is building on stories that have come before. This is building on moments that have come before. Mm -hmm. And the creator is aware and trying to make sure that they're exciting and fresh and you have all the knowledge you need. It's not homework. But mm -hmm. for those of us who've gone on the journey, we enjoy it. It's part of what it is. It's part of the value. It absolutely is. It's sauce. And also, we live in a world where uh, I, uh, one of my favorite shows recently was Poker Face, Ryan Johnson and Natasha Holmes' show. And people were like, but it's not really connected. It's like every week it's a new adventure or mystery. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's uh -huh. okay. Uh -huh. All right. Here we go. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. yeah, one of my least favorite critiques of, of modern day Star Wars is uh, all Star Wars does is just reference itself. I'm like, I, I understand where some of that comes from. But mm -hmm. uh, Ahsoka to me is uh, still kind of a new character. You know, 2008 ain't that long ago, kids. Um, and this is a, a fun uh, reference to explore then, if that's what you think. Yeah, no. And, and final thing in, in this quote, I, I love that Floney is talking about, you know, she's got this history to Anakin and, and from the animated series. And yet she's all new and can go in her own direction in her own way, he says. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I'm so excited for the new I as well, because I think yeah. all of the imagery we've seen, you know, in including that other uh, cover for for Empire, which I know is sort of like an artist made it, but a Lucasfilm, I would imagine, has to uh, mm -hmm. give a thumbs up on that. It, it's got all of that, you know, Mortis world between worlds kind of glowing stuff where we're, we're clearly Ahsoka's always been a very, very uh, uh, spiritual character and Floney has always been very interested in, in the mystical esoteric not able to completely know it side of the Jedi the force the galaxy of Star Wars and really diving deep into that in, in live action is really exciting to me and I think that might be a part of the new that we're pushing toward mm, pushing towards the new with the character we we love and other people hopefully will love soon. Well, we are not done talking about Ahsoka. More Ahsoka talk after the break. Two stories to get to before we do the Little Force Center recommends an audiobook we think you should try out on us. Joseph, what do we have? We are recommending Path of Deceit by Tessa Grattan and Justina Ireland. It's part of the High Republic that we're not caught up on, but we want to be. <laughs> and maybe you can get uh, caught up by getting an audiobook. You can uh, download your free audiobook today by going to audibletrial.com slash force center. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash force center for your free audio book. All right, we're going to take a quick break. On the other side, Sabine, red lightsabers. It's all here in the Ahsoka series coming our way in August. More on the way. Welcome back to Force Center, what used to be the big show, what used to be the main show, what used to be the superstar star of our fleet, but now <laughs> part of the fleet here, the news here on uh, Force Center, uh, Joseph and I looking at the Empire Online press drips. I don't know if that's even the greatest <laughs> phrase to describe it there, but I like it. Um, we have got, uh, this one is also released. Uh, Empire released a still of Ahsoka cloaked in a gray robe and Natasha Lou Bordizzo, who I'm sure does not remember me on the flight back from London, looking much <laughs> like her Rebels epilogue self. Uh, we've seen a few shots out there with different hair links and colors. So we're, we know we're going to be doing some, um, I guess not necessarily jumping, but I just think we're experience a lot of different uh, aspects of this story's timeline. Bordizzo has this to say about Sabine and her overriding goal in the show to find Ezra. She feels an obligation to him. When they freed Lothal, she was given this hero status, but she doesn't feel that she's earned that because she lost her friend in that whole debacle. She's just focused on the promise she made to him to find him. Uh, there's some other stuff in the article about, you know, Ahsoka's thing is to find Thrawn and yours is to find Ezra, but we're going to sync up on that there. Uh, thoughts on this, her hero status. I love this little line about that and the difference between searching for Ezra and trying to find Thrawn and where can we meet in the middle on that one? Yeah, no, I love just the number of <laughs> uh, investigations we can do in, in timeline with every one of these photos. We're like, okay, that's Sabine's hair, but that's the wrong color cloak for Ahsoka. So <laughs> when is this? 
you know, and uh, <laughs> yep. does, 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 does hair grow faster in space or how much time is going to pass for Sabine to have yeah. that great new do? And there's that before, uh, I know uh, yeah. people have uh, great deep thoughts on that. Um, but for me, I think what, what's exciting about this, uh, this quote is just diving into uh, Sabine's soul and and uh, trauma mm. recovery as well, which I think is so much the theme of this era of a lot has been, we won, but we lost a lot. So mm. what's next? Um, and I think there's, there's plenty of room for interpretation, in my opinion, about the end of Rebels. Yeah. But for me, I got the, I got the impression that Sabine made it her top goal to guard Lothal mm -hmm. and wait for an attack that never came from the Empire. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if we're going to deal with that any, anyway, because we know that in theory, while she was guarding Lothal, and maybe I'm misinterpreting it, maybe she left, some real bad stuff happened on Mandalore. Mm -hmm. um, and where are her, where's her family? Uh, yeah. uh, you know, um, did, did they survive? Um, Mm -hmm. so i think there i i'm really interested in that of like i'm a i'm a hero for saving lothal maybe kind of a guardian coming up with little problems but did i did did does she feel bad for sitting out the war mm -hmm. she's in the show uh she's she's a restless warrior who's ready to go you know uh and now she spent uh, a long time waiting for an attack that never came um I'm really interested in that as well as her relationship with Ezra and how much is any of that tied up in her relationship with Ezra. I think that's, that's a great, it's a great thought. And, 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 um, I, I, I've been slowly, I'm in like season three of rebels on a rewatch that uh, we'll have to pick up a little pace before, so I can, <laughs> or, um, before Ahsoka drops. But yeah, I, I love that because I really love this idea. If she was given this hero status, but she doesn't feel that she, she's earned that. And, and she ties it to, to the loss of Eb, Ezra and, and this promise to Ezra. But also, I love what you're saying of like, this is where I chose to put some of my energies. This is where I felt I was needed. And I don't know if that's right. Uh, a little bit to try to connect it to real world stuff for me. It's like, I don't know. You ever just kind of look at yourself in the mirror and, and think, well, what have I done? I haven't done anything. <laughs> what have I accomplished in life? And then maybe sometimes you look back and you have to align yourself with what you have done or where, well, I needed to be here whether I wanted to or not. And, and that led me to this and that's kind of that kind of stuff. Again, if Dave's sitting down to with a yellow notepad to explicitly, you know, direct, directly, uh, you know, address that. I, I don't think so. But that's where I'm, I, I'm intrigued by what she's saying. Um, it's so easy because this is star Wars and you get the action figures and you put them on your shelf and, and, and Sabine's a hero. Um, mm -hmm. She is. And, and to, for her to look in the mirror, the space mirror and not see that and not come to terms with that. And, and again, what is a hero? That's a, that's a big question. Sure. I know, but like I, I I'm fast. It's a great starting point for someone like you're saying this restless warrior ready to go who missed out on so many things. And let's say if some part of her family does survive or all of her family survives, would they again be like, where were you? <laughs> hey, <laughs> what gives? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she, yeah, and there's so much great storytelling about which family needs her the most at what time. Yes, you know, yeah. and she's got her 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 family of origin uh, in in the Mandalorians, uh, but she's got this rebels family too. And yeah, um, mm -hmm. and I you know how much of, of her commitment to Lothal is is the sacrifice that Kanan made as well. Um, just mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there's a lot of great stuff to explore in terms of the the Thrawn Ezra thing. Um, I would imagine that from Ahsoka's point of view, there's a little bit of a two birds, one stone. Uh, there's mm -hmm. a friend in need and a dire threat to the galaxy and their fates are intertwined. Uh, yeah. Just seems like something where Ahsoka would very much need to be involved. I'm fascinated also just by how far the show will go. If this is a, it's, I think it's gonna become pretty clear of like, yeah, episode three, they find Ezra or if it's like right. Ezra's the last beat of the show. Um, so I have no idea if they'll get into it, but I just their relationship, Ahsoka and Sabine's relationship with Ezra is is great because if Ahsoka's mm -hmm. been going around going, I, I think I know how I want to go about being a lone wandering Jedi. I think I know my philosophy and I think I'll follow it. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. then connects with Luke. Uh, a school is starting. We don't know where that is on the timeline. Uh, we don't know what Ezra has been through, what he thinks the Jedi order should be. Did, does she meet him in episode three? And he's like, all right, time to start a school. And she's like, no, you know, 
um, there was in Rebels, especially in the earlier seasons, um, it, 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 it seemed like Ezra was real sweet on Sabine. Is that just, mm-hmm. was that just like a childhood thing in, in the early seasons of that show? Or is that something that Filoni has any interest in following up on and, and how they both feel about that? And um, I, um, I, <laughs> I'm not going to offer any strong opinion because I don't want any shippers mad at me in any direction. <laughs> in uh, any which way, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I could see that as just like, yeah, that was, you know, a, a childhood, you know, crush yeah. uh, that Sabine did not seem, in my estimation, to super reciprocate. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's a lot in just their relationships once they find Ezra. And maybe that's all the theoretical season, too. Yeah, no, you're, um, you got me thinking about uh, if and when they find Ezra, Ezra, right? Like, like. It, it, and I know a lot of, there was even, I thought, bad takes and bad jokes on it, but of, of did in, in season three of Mando being like, I must go to the waters. And, oh, I, he he went there. <laughs> and <laughs> and I personally loved it because then it just opened it up to what the show was really about this season. And, and that was just part of the journey, not the journey. And, uh, so, yeah, I, I, I could go either way with it. I could, first episode, great, because I'd love to explore some of the things you're talking about. You're right. I don't think it's a forgotten aspect of the Ezra and Sabine relationship. It's there. And the amount of people who rewatch Rebels daily, it's definitely there. But yeah, do you go anywhere with that? Um, do you need to? Uh, do you want to? There's a little romance in Star Wars or a little dealing with not romance in Star Wars. There's a lot of interesting things there. But this also could be the hey, uh, the, the real lessons were the things we discovered along the way. And Ezra's at the end of that. That could be mm-hmm. important as well. And, 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 and yeah, I, I think it's just I, I think there's been a wonderful amount of tension played with between Ahsoka and Sabine in the in, in the promotion so far, right? Mm-hmm. They're not, it's not a warm embrace we're seeing there, and and I will admit, like, and it's been a while since I watched the end of Rebels. I'm, I'm, I don't like to jump ahead when I'm rewatching something. Mm-hmm. I like to get there. Um, I could just YouTube it and watch a clip, but I I don't remember back then taking it as. Um, tension filled as much and maybe i'm completely wrong on that it, to me gandalf ahsoka shows up gandalf the white ahsoka shows up in her white cloak and by the way maybe there's a great cloak underneath it and, she, and she's layered who knows <laughs> and it was like cool it's go time for me like oh i was like oh great they're gonna go oh maybe we'll get another animated series you know that was my vibe back then i can't wait to go back and revisit it as it was presented then and then at, attach new meaning to it now of just kind of you know, I think there's definitely some implied tension there. And and that's an interesting starting point is they both have goals that I don't think on the surface aren't conflicting, but they definitely seem to be pulling them in different directions. And now they got to find a way to go forward. That's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there's just a lot of story that, that we don't know of what it has caused mm-hmm. the tension between them. Is there something that, you know, Sabine thinks Ahsoka should have been doing that she's not or that kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah. Love that there. Um, we, well, there's a question I'd written down here, but I think we should move that one to the end because uh, unless you have any uh, final thoughts on Sabine here, other than I'll say this, my final thought is, it's a great photo. <laughs> and, <Is> it- <laughs> you know, it's uh, it, it, it's working. It's getting me excited to just dive into this show. Um, not that I wasn't before, but to your point up top, of, I did feel myself kind of like, I will wait for Ahsoka when Ahsoka gets here. Um, mm-hmm. Now, well, despite that despite that edict to myself the excitement is building yeah the ahsoka hype is here i love how much they are putting it across as it is called ahsoka for a reason she is the main character but we are spending time with her sabine seems to be like uh the the number two on the call sheet and i Mm -hmm. i just love the character of sabine i love the way that she uh, uh is this different approach to to mandalorians and we've now spent so much time on mandalorian culture but i've just always loved the visual art side of her and i can't wait to see that in live action and maybe a question i've been screaming about s- since 2014 in my collider days she was paint spray painting a picture of cad bane how why what's that <laughs> like what does she know cad bane shows up again who knows Ooh. Uh, i want those answers uh we that was going to be the end of the show that was it social media plugs were on the way but then this morning and i guessing by even by the time this episode hits all of your ears there'll be more pictures to discuss a new photo drop from empire and uh, not much behind it in terms of the article but we're going to dive into it uh the uh ahsoka show will feature an inquisitor a new image was revealed and that's kind of it uh empire i'm uh, getting the correct article and hoping no audio ads pop up on this one um 
even the article, I'll say this here, kind of is like, yeah, there's an Inquisitor. That's kind of weird, right? <laughs> not, not a lot of them supposed to be there post Return of the Jedi. Uh, so let's dive into this. Um, in fact, the exact line is, there shouldn't be any Inquisitors left at this point. But, Joseph, there's a lot of speculation about this photo. You and I were having fun. Yes, yes, we are the speculate responsible people. I hear it on a lot of podcasts. Uh, a lot of people uh, who listen uh, to us have gone on to use that phrase for themselves as well. We believe in it. But it does not mean that Joseph and I do not spend a little bit of time looking at the photo and going, ooh. So, Joseph, ooh, where do you think it is and what do you think this is? Yeah, well, so here's here's my ooh. Here's I'm just gonna start with the excitement, uh, the speculating mm -hmm. before I get to the responsibly. Um, one of the many places it looks like it could be is it looks a little like uh, Korvax Fen Mustafar, mm -hmm. uh, the the area near Vader's castle, and that would be super cool. Um, mm -hmm. I, I would love uh, if Ahsoka is a uh, part of her wandering is a tour dealing with the past and i can see some story where some some inquisitor who survived the inquisitor purge <laughs> yeah. uh is making their home in this dark side haven yeah. um so that would be super cool i would love to see ahsoka on mustafar and, and soaking up the horror of what happened there um mm -hmm. the responsible part of it is uh hey if it turns out to be that way i'll be thrilled if it's not if this is one shot from a flashback that Ahsoka mm -hmm. has <laughs> right, right. in a vision, I'm not going to flip the table and say it should have been Mustafar. That's, you know, yeah. that's what the responsible part is about. But I I think there there's every possibility that, yay, yeah, an, an Inquisitor survived uh, and is mm -hmm. just like Ahsoka, right? Now now a, a person on a path but without a structure or, or an organization. Um yeah. So yeah. it, it, if, if Ahsoka feels like I'm just wandering the galaxy, sweeping up an Inquisitor is something that could be swept up. Could absolutely also be a, a flashback to a different time. This could be an Inquisitor that Ahsoka encountered in her in her journey, you know, before she uh, she ended up on Malachor. Yeah, I, I, I'm all for another part of, of the, the timeline, right? Going back and and getting a flashback or uh, just look back or just this, maybe the story isn't a flashback. Maybe it just takes place in different times. Who knows? Mm -hmm. uh, I think I'm, I'm there for that. I am intrigued. Yeah. We're having some fun. I think your, your Mustafar, um, it, it put it on Mustafar t-shirt idea here or should have been Mustafar t-shirt is good idea. Uh, that works for me a lot. Makes a lot of sense. What you're pitching, uh, uh, you know, uh, someone kind of, well, you know, what? seems like uh, I'm going to move into Vader's fortress here since uh things have changed in the galaxy i'm gonna hold up here could be something like that i i i think i the ground maybe not so much i don't know it's been a while but like just the the image of uh, the 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 kind of the blue hue over the forest of the background i was like this is very star killer base slash ilum mm, and that would be great too you know around the same vibe uh, so could go in there but you know again be having a professor Huang around going, you know, Hey, we should maybe head there and see what's going on there. <laughs> Any crystals left after those death stars? Yes. Yeah. I left a gift card there. Let's go back. My keys are there. Uh, that could be something for me as uh, to be excited about as well. But I, I, I will say this, um, as, um, we mentioned before in discussing the, the passing of Ray Stevenson and just, um, his character, Balon Skull, just being in the trailer that made me, kind of got well well number one wasn't necessarily expecting that too it seems intriguing Ooh, the orange hue everything and, and and it kind of ramped up um the stakes for me in a lot of ways this does as well uh, and also just kind of reminds me i bet there'll be some cool lightsaber fights coming which is part of why we love star wars yeah yeah they talk so much on the panel at star wars celebration about all the actions so i'm very mm -hmm. curious to see what it's like yeah and and do you because of it was it was going around, and you and I have discussed as, as well as many of the Star Wars podcasts over the years of of hey other Jedi, it, you know Cal Kestis, cool. Where's Cal factor into Luke's story? Luke being part of the, I say part of the Chosen One arc, just related mm -hmm. to him and Anakin and the bigger stakes stakes of the galaxy. There's Kanan and Cal, and there's a lot of Jedi. It, it, it's worked for me more and more over the years because it just has made sense logically, and it, it just like that would be what happened not every one of them were wiped out only 19 years before obi-wan was talking to luke makes a lot of sense to me so the amount of inquisitors we don't the, the number changes right talking about you know tuscans walking in, in straight lines to hide their numbers i think the inquisitors <laughs> had their numbers too one 
survives uh, whatever happened. Um, you had, you said the Inquisitor purge. That's that's hilarious to me. Is as if Mothma said, all right, ever now we need to purge those inquisitors. Um, the, the fact that one would survive and 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 is a, a you know a force attuned person with a red blade and Ahsoka runs with them along their journeys. That's that's very intriguing to me and not something I thought about before. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think that you know the inquisitors. I don't think their number will ever be defined. They're certainly mm-hmm. not being named. <laughs> They're like three words. <laughs> yeah, when we get up to like uh, the the forty eighth sibling or, or whatever, uh, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it, my understanding had been that they winnow out by the time of the uh, mm-hmm. original trilogy. They're not running around then because Vader and Ahsoka, or Vader and Ahsoka, Vader and the Emperor feel like yeah, they're they're next to no Jedi left. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so th- so I think for me, I, there's this this curiosity of like if they were just told to put their sabers down or if their heads rolled um, yeah. and their, their stories are told across so many media. Maybe there's something in a Vader comic book I don't know about at this point. Yeah. Um, so but I like the idea of like I had to fight to survive. <laughs> yeah, I had to escape Vader, too. Uh, who, who, who would have thought uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when I joined the uh, <laughs> all, all, all force users but me should be dead party that they would eventually come after me? <laughs> who would have thought it? Uh, that's hilarious. That's hilarious. Yeah. Um, sorry. Sorry. They're, they're just the, the the show is is just so loaded with like if it was just I don't know really much about this, but it's Ahsoka's journey. Mm-hmm. But the persistent is Hayden going to appear in some way rumors, mm-hmm. the great mystery of, of, of Balin Skull and his apprentice, the Thrawn, the, the Sabine, Hera, will Jason Sandula show up mm-hmm. an Inquisitor? It's 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 loaded. It is loaded. No, you're absolutely right. Zeb, right? Chopper. Like there's so many things that it's uh, not just about Rebels 2.0 for me, but just there's 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 so many wonderful characters and questions around them. And during this time, I'm excited to see it. It's like, yeah, I almost feel like Thrawn's definitely not second fiddle, but it's like, oh yeah, and then we have to get to Thrawn. <laughs> and then Purgles, and then Ezra, there, there could be a lot of light. And then that, again, that's why I think when, you know, these two, uh, you know, dark side, you know, reddish orange blade wielding characters show up in the trailer. I was like, oh, I just got a fifth course in my meal. This is amazing. I love you. Let's do it. Do it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, we are almost done here. Final question. I kind of already touched upon it, but, uh, you know, we're beginning to see these photos. And, and and how are we feeling about this, quote, jump to live action? These characters and more, like you just mentioned, are taking. It is to me, it, it, we've been used to it a little bit over the last few years with Mandalorian. Uh, Cobb Vanth jumping from book to, to, to screen. Uh, Cad Bane, as we said, showing up a lot of... Um, character Fennec Shan going from live action animation in a hit away way. <laughs> um, I really enjoying it to start there, Joseph. And, and, and I, I really love um, how Sabine looks. I, and, and Natasha Lubor does so it's, it's not just about looking exactly like the character, but the vibe really works. It's, it's, it's such a, you know, vibrant character. All the Rebels characters are. Remember, one of my early complaints in 2014, because I might have been an idiot, was like, I don't know, too bright. Uh, and I should have told myself, wait till you get to the Grav Scooters uh, that show up later on in Star Wars. It just, I, I, I remember feeling that a lot, but that's what I love about it now. And that it is, uh, there's so much personality in these characters that it, it could be hard to translate. And the big Ahsoka transition that just was hard to pull off technically with the, mm-hmm. the, the Montrails. And now I think we're in a better spot with that where you could make them and, and 3D print skeletons, uh, you know, skeletal <laughs> like, frames them. That's craziness. Um, I, I love these photos. I'm excited. And, uh, and I think it's working, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I think it, it is thrilling on multiple levels. One is just like the fun challenge of it. Yeah, because the, these characters like Zeb, mm-hmm. designed for animation. Uh, Togruta was, uh, Ahsoka Species was practical, but not uh, flipping around having fights. <laughs> yep. yep. Um, so there's all this just like fun filmmaking, story making challenge of it there's also i think this real commitment that floney has spoken about of like the animated shows are stylized so the cad bane shouldn't look exactly like he did that's a Mm -hmm. stylization so what what does that translate back to in live action same thing Mm -hmm. with the dark saber i i even think that you know the the spirit of zeb was there but it was dialed down a little bit he's got some real big 
Yeah. I'm in a I'm in an animated show, super big deliveries that were dialed mm. down a little bit. So there's all this fun filmmaking side of it. Mm. Um, then there's the Rebels side of it that that Rebels had such a distinctive style, you know, uh, adapting uh, Macquarie, but then really being invested in that in that color palette of the sort of the muted mm. green and muted orange and uh, yeah. all that. So seeing that uh, translated, seeing Sabine, who is a visual artist, <laughs> mm-hmm. translated. So there's all all sorts of things, but the biggest thing for me is just that there's this uh, meta commitment to the theme of Star Wars that everyone matters, mm-hmm. and just such a statement that these characters are not less than because they started in animation. Mm-hmm. You know, you and I have talked about there's just a there's just a reality. Um, people aren't going to watch the animated shows as much as they're going to watch the live actions. There's still culturally uh, tears of right a movie released in a theater <laughs> a live action film released in a theater big as you can be and l- lower than that is a weekly animated television show um but in terms of the characters the story what these characters mean to people the effect they have uh there is no difference uh, they are just as important as any other character and a show like ahsoka coming along and just really celebrating that and allowing even more people to meet these characters is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Fantastic indeed. And I think that's the overriding theme for our discussion today. Fantastic. We got some news. Mm-hmm. All right. That is it. We covered it. We covered it more, more. I'm sure even while you're listening now is on the way and we'll break it down. Uh, we had to leave some stuff off the table uh, related to Andor. some interesting quotes from Diego Luna and Tony Gilroy. They're out there. Uh, we'll discuss those in time. Uh, so uh, as we get on out of here, I'll let you know where you can find us. We're on Twitter at Force Center Pod, Instagram and YouTube as well. We will have a live show in June, but we'll let you win, uh, let you know when because uh, we got a lot of things going on here. <laughs> uh, but it's uh, on our list. Facebook page is Force Center podcast uh, we are on acast i heart radio apple podcast google podcast stitcher spotify tune in and more just search you'll find us merch available at tpublic.com slash user slash four center get that speculate responsibly shirt over there patreon.com slash four center is where you can support us directly uh follow me at catnapstock or go to catnapstock.com for all the things i do including an asmr channel if you want some sports card asmr some radio music fun at pop rock and radio and more it's all there joseph uh, where can they find and follow you as you make another film where, where yeah you can you can, oh. <laughs> thank you uh yeah you can uh follow me on lots of social media the new thing for this week is uh, i did get an invite to blue sky so i'm on blue sky uh, if you uh, get an invite, I'd really suggest trying it out. It's uh, Twitter, but it's called Blue Sky. And there's a slightly different vibe, but it it is Twitter, uh, in my opinion. So come find me on Blue Sky. I am still on Twitter. I am on uh, Instagram and Mastod on TikTok. I'm going to get back to doing uh, some not unboxing videos. I have, oh, I found so many of my Indiana Jones friends I want. I, I have Marion and a monkey. I can't wait Ooh. to share. So if you'd like to see that, follow me on any of the social media. My handle everywhere is at Joseph Scrimshaw. Oh, there you go, my friends. All right, that is it for this week. We'll see you next time. Happy Pride Month to all of you out there. We're so glad you're here celebrating Star Wars with us here at Force Center. We'll see you next time, friends. <laughs>